Hello everyone, and welcome to another Collodion chat. A little bit uh, belated, I know, but better late than never, right? So I haven't uh, haven't really posted much for the past year or so because I haven't had a lot of interest uh, to show. I think I've done a couple experiments that didn't really pan out, so I haven't had much to um, to do a video about. But today I've got something that I am a little bit excited for, and that is a reveal of the fourth version of my 3D printed plate holder. Uh, so I'm not quite ready to release this yet. That will probably come in the next week or two. Um, but I did want to give you a little bit of a heads up, a little bit of a first look at this thing, and give you a little background on the history of the 3D, pla 3D printed plate holders that I've made, and the reason that this one is hopefully going to be so much better than the previous versions. So I've got some of my old ones here on the bench, and this is the fourth iteration. So what I have in my hand here is the very first 3D printed plate holder style that I made. Um, so the main thing that has changed between the versions so far is the method of closing up the back, right? So every plate holder uses a dark slide to close up the front. And a lot of plate holders, you know, just kind of out there in the world, also use a dark slide on the back. But I never wanted to do that um, because my main goal in making plate holders in the first place was to make a 5 by 12 um, with the hopes that I would be able to process plates from that in a bastard box. And a 5 by 12 plate holder, if you put a, a dark slide in the back of that, there's not going to be enough room to pull that slide in the bastard box. So a lid that just removes from the back without having to slide it out of anything has been a design goal from basically day one. So the first way that I pulled that off was with this somewhat clunky system of sliding latches where on the back of the plate holder I've got four latches that kind of slide up and down and they slide into recesses in the back of the plate holder. So these are kind of finicky um, it's very difficult to install these little arches that hold them in place. It's also kind of difficult to operate them. You know, there's nothing to really catch your fingers on here, so you have to just use friction to slide it down. And I was just never super happy with this, right? And of course, to remove the plate, you have to turn it upside down, let gravity do that job. So this worked, um, but not what I have ever considered optimal. So. I replaced this design with a second version, and the second version I don't actually have any copies of on hand because it was very fiddly and it didn't work out very well. Um, for that design I attempted to replicate sliding latches like you might see uh, used to secure a lens board to a camera for instance. It turns out it's a very difficult thing to 3D print and have it be you know, reasonably thin and still strong enough to do the job. So I pretty quickly followed that up with the third version, uh, which has lasted quite some time. I think I released this well over a year ago and I haven't felt the need to update it until just now. Uh, so this version, and this is actually a copy that's in pretty bad shape, but it does illustrate how it works. Uh, the third version had these toggles on the back. And the toggles felt like a really good design in principle because uh, they're pretty secure, they're pretty easy to slide back and forth with your fingers. But what I found is that in practice these toggles are very, very fragile. I mean, first they're difficult to install. You have to put heat set inserts into the plastic and then you have to very carefully screw the screw down with just the right amount of tension. Ideally use some Loctite to keep it from slipping around. Um, it was just a lot of hassle to put together. But then in actual use, the problem with these toggles is that on the 4x5 and the 5x7 version, they were very fragile, very susceptible to breaking. So on this one, for instance, which honestly hasn't seen that much use, as you can see, two of the four toggles have broken off. Um, so, you know, anytime I printed one of these holders for a friend, I would send them with an entire extra set of toggles because it was pretty much a given that they were going to break at some point. So I've never been super 
thrilled with this design, but it does work, right? It's light tight uh, and it's a plate holder that you can print and that you can download off the internet for free, right? That's been kind of the main selling point for a long time. Um, my goal with these was never to really create a plate holder that would be better than any of the other options on the market that you could buy or necessarily even just a particularly good holder, right? The value proposition with these was always they're very cheap, right? You can print one for a couple dollars worth of plastic on your printer at home, put it together, and you're ready to go shoot some plates. And maybe it's not the most convenient, maybe it's not the most uh, rugged, but it does get the job done. So that was basically where I was at for quite some time. Uh, I never really expected these to be a super high quality product. And there is one other thing that has always irritated me about this design, which is shared between all three previous iterations. And that is that I used this, this foam backer rod, which kind of expands to fill the dark slide, um, the dark slide path when the slide is pulled out. And then it sort of squishes out of the way when you put the dark slide back in. And that's always been a very finicky light trap. Like it, it does work, but it's also been very susceptible to damage. Um, it's very easy to catch the, the dark slide on the foam while you're inserting it into the holder. And then if that foam rips out, uh, you're never gonna get it back in because of course it had to be placed before the two halves of the holder were glued together. So that's kind of my rundown of gripes with this holder design. And that's the reason that I haven't considered to be a great holder, um, just a free holder. But recently I, I saw a company selling 3D printed plate holders, uh, Zebra Design, and theirs attached the lid to the back of the plate holder with magnets. And so I decided to take that idea and see if I could adapt mine to use magnets, right? Because magnets are super handy. Um, they reduce the, the parts that you need to assemble the plate holder. And they also solve the basic problem that I've been experiencing with these 3D printed closures, which is that it's very hard to make a, a closure system, a mechanical closure system that is both compact, secure, and strong, right? Because, you know, we have a limited thickness in a plate holder. It can only be so thick. Um, there's only a certain amount of distance between the surface the plate has to rest on and the lid. And whatever space you use for your closure on the back, right? I think these latches are about three millimeters thick, maybe four like that's subtracted from the usable area inside the holder. Um, so, you know, if I could make super thick, beefy latches on all of these uh, plate holders, I would be, I'd be great, right? It would work fine. The problem is you can't because you also need to fit a plate in there. So magnets solve that problem very elegantly um, because they're thin, but they're still strong and you don't have to design very small, intricate moving parts. You just put them together and they stick. So that brings me to the fourth generation, uh, which I'm revealing today. And I'm really excited about this plate holder because for the first time, I actually feel like I've got a design here that is a genuinely good plate holder. Um, this is something that I think you would use even if you know it weren't free, or at least I like to think that some people would. So. Let's run down the difference here, right? I had two big gripes about the previous plate holders, right? One was the foam light traps, which were susceptible to damage. And the other was the, the toggles that I used to attach the lid to the holder, uh, which were also very susceptible to breakage and which were just kind of fiddly to install and required a lot of extra hardware. So using magnets, I have solved both of those problems in this new design. So first of all, the magnets attach the back to the body. So we've got magnets in the back of the holder body, we've got magnets on the back of the lid, and the lid just pops right on. This is strong enough to hold a plate, uh, you know, with a little bit of spring tension in there to keep it held up tight against the front of the holder, but it is light enough that it's still fairly easy to pull the back off of the holder. And 
since you now have some force to overcome when removing the back, this has forced me to finally add an actual finger latch that you can use, sorry, a finger, uh, a finger indentation that you can use to actually grab and pull this off. So my previous iterations, you've had to dump the holder over and let gravity pull the lid off for you. With this one, you've actually got some tabs on the side that you can just grab, pull it open. So that's great. Um, but I also realized that the magnets could solve both problems, not just, the, not just the closure on the back, but also the light trap, which I had previously used foam for. So now instead of foam, we have two, two plastic pieces inside of here, uh, which basically act as shutters, right? So they, they have magnets in the back of them, and the magnets in the plate holder body repel them and force them forward so that they block the path of the, of the dark slide from letting any light through uh, when, you know, when the slide has been pulled out. But when you put the slide back in, they've got a little bit of a tapered edge on the front, which the slide can catch and just push them out of the way. And then as soon as we pull the slide out, they just snap right back into place as if they were spring loaded. But there's no springs to install it's all just magnets. So that has solved kind of the two big problems that made the previous iterations difficult to use. And there's also a couple of extra bonuses to this. Um, one is that it requires very few non-printed parts. So the previous iterations you've needed um, heat set inserts, you've needed screws, washers, Loctite. The only thing you need to assemble this is the printed parts uh, some magnets in two sizes, and glue, uh, that's it. There are no screws, you know, no washers, no inserts to set. You just glue everything together, you put the magnets in place, and it works. The other handy thing is that this new light trap system takes up a lot less space than the foam did. So if we hold this up to my old plate holder, you can see there's quite a bit of a, a gap in the lengths. Um, I was actually able to shave 20 millimeters off the length of this old plate holder. Now what I found is that this very short version is actually not very convenient to operate. Um, in my 4x5 field camera, I, I can't grip this and pull it out. I have to push it from the back. So the primary version of this that I'm going to publish will actually be longer. It will be the same length as the previous iteration. Um, which I believe I, I made about the same length as like a Chamonix holder. However, I will be providing the shortened versions. And the shortened versions will be very handy if you had a, if you were someone who wanted to print one of the previous versions but couldn't because it didn't fit on your printer. Um, they will now be ever so slightly easier to print. The 8x10 version in particular has been squeezed down to a size where it will now fit within a 300 millimeter print bed. Um, just baby, just barely. I think it's like 295 millimeters or something along those lines. But if you've got a 300 millimeter printer, you can now just barely squeeze one of my eight by 10 plate holders onto your print bed. Whereas before you would have needed, um, you know, a 325 or a 350 millimeter. I've also got the five by seven and I'm not sure what the length on this is. I think it's a hair over 200 millimeters. So if you've got a 250 millimeter printer, um, you should be able to print this. So um, where are we at? The 4x5 holder is good to go. Um, this is an early prototype. I've actually added two more magnets on the back here to make it slightly sturdier. But I have tested this. It does work. No light leaks. I was very happy with it. 5x7 is assembled, but not tested yet. Um, the 8x10 I have printed a test copy of, but unfortunately I fell prey to some pretty crappy magnets from Amazon in this size, so I'm gonna have to give this another shot. But basically I wanna do a little bit more tweaking, um, a little bit more testing on the bigger sizes, and then my plan is to release all three sizes simultaneously um, at the same time. I don't know why I said simultaneously at the same time. Simultaneously means at the same time. But uh, these will all be out. I'm hoping to release them within probably the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, I'll get 
an 8x10 whipped up soon, hopefully get some better magnets from a different Amazon seller, and I will see how that works. I am also going to record in the next couple days here an assembly video. So I'm currently printing um, the final iteration of the 4x5 design, and I'm going to record myself putting it together just to demonstrate the proper installation of the magnets and how to kind of glue the whole thing together. So um, look forward to that. I will release the assembly video and the STL files and the free CAD files all at the same time. So once these are ready, you'll be able to print them yourselves. You'll also be able to modify them if you would like with the original CAD files. Um, they're all parametric designs. So if you wanna make them in a slightly different size, or if you wanna tweak the number of magnets, the size of magnets or anything along those lines, it's, it's very straightforward. You just update some numbers in a spreadsheet and the design kind of automatically adjusts itself. So um, I think that's enough for today. And I hope this will be a useful plate holder for all of y'all out there. And uh, yeah, until next time, I will hopefully be back soon with the design finalized and ready to go. So everyone have a great rest of your week and until next time.